and a very good morning for me anyway. It's rendering part one, and I'm calling this one aspect ratio. It's chapter 10, video one. Two things, file, project settings we're about to look at, and also the animation render side of it. The picture here of St. Paul's Cathedral is actually really wide. It's something called polyvision, and this is how we can change the aspect ratios. As a word in at the end of this video I'll be just talking about rendering times and also how to cr keep Chrome at 100% so to get cracking let's have a look at something and we are talking about a St Paul's Cathedral scene and you'll notice there are no view masks at all and the reason is because on this render on the project settings rather what I've made it do is set to 200 by 500 so what I can do is just reset this here at let's say 1280 by 720. I'm just going to type in 720. I've just got to sort of watch what I'm doing here. And I'm also going to lock the aspect, which is pretty much how Earth Studio sits as its default. So you see there that the view masks have come back. So if I proceeded to take a snapshot top right or a render, then we would get exactly this 16 by 9. The thing that I like to refer to all the time is this Wikipedia slide about aspect ratio, about um, different things. When I say different things, I'm talking about, let's just make it really, really bigger just to talk them through. If you haven't seen this, I'll put the link in the box. So old school standard aspect 4 by 3, which you can find probably on video or television, then don't know much about this one but it's 1.66 the one that we all know is the DVD type thing which is 16 by 9 1.78 to 1 and then it starts to get wider through um, if you go to widescreen TV or see a movie in a theatre remember the old Panavision thing at 2.75 to 1 and what I've actually got here is the rare use of polyvision which is 4 by 1 so what I had set up more or less was a thousand pixels by 250 ish and you could see the layered uh, comparison so going back to St Paul's Cathedral here what we have are many different aspects now what I would say is that if you notice that I'm set up on 16 by 9 here if I proceeded to a render which I'm about to do and you'll notice that 1280 by 720 is in in other words that's what's set if I wanted to go in and you'll notice that it's it's slightly grayed out but it's workable and that is unlocked the aspect ratio if I wanted to go back to my say uh, 1000 by say 250 what happens is that on the render it will update automatically and there it is uh, forgive that massive Google Earth I think that will actually go smaller on render if I if I play it back or render so you can see that if I sit this at 1000 by 250 and then I cancel and go back to my animation window, you'll notice that's not changed. That is still sitting uh, where it was before at my dimension. So the point of this is that we can change any dimensions whatsoever at the animation um, timeline or, or set default viewport, call it what you want in the program, and then we can change them after as well so if you set this up absolutely exactly 16 by 9 and then you went off to render the warning is that something in the, the dark view mask here may become visible or get cut out so for an example if I went back to render and I said oh yeah I'd like to make say a square version of it and let, let's say I wanted to do 720 by 720 because that's the closest square that I can get to as one of them set up already and then um, here is my square and of course it's totally different now the interesting thing here is if we go in and we, we actually link those back in again and I wanted to make that square a lot bigger let's say I wanted to make it 1920 this time you'll notice that as I type 1920 it's maintained its aspect ratio of 1920 so the definition of this particular render is increased very high to 1920 pixels square so we can play around with that all day long if we wish to anything else of course you may know already that the um, watermark the attribution can go anywhere you like as long as it's top left top center top right or bottom normally bottom right is the default so what I would like to say there is that um, if I undo this and I want to get it back to say 1920 by 
1080 that's particular so if you wanted to do a tall video a portrait maybe for um, mobile phones uh, which I have played around with the Tower of Pisa in Italy in the past then what we get is a slightly different um, render so if we go back and cancel that and go back to our regular view with the viewport and the timeline and everything you'll notice that nothing has actually changed um, pre-render shall we say I think um, although I'm not getting a load screen there don't really care so so what I really have spoken about here is the file project settings that you can change around and look for that unlock um, unlink rather um, we've talked about the animation renders and let me just talk a, a little bit in depth because when you start to render any file um, then you're gonna have to wait around so in the forum when I first got Google Earth Studio I did a quick test and I am on and I'll say this down here I'm on a 15.6 uh, Intel Pentium 2.16 gigahertz um, I use an extended monitor of 21 and a half inches I've got quick internet and what I'm getting at is if I started a sample project of 30 frames at 10 seconds I get 1920 all the way down to 256 and what that translates is that there is a substantial difference in my estimation with my video card because it's done in Chrome that my 1920 by 1080 would take 28 minutes back in December not in February because I haven't retested this but as a general rule if I pulled that dimension down to 1280 you notice that I've actually taken my 28 minutes and got to 10 minutes and of course smaller and smaller it's quicker and quicker and quicker now the, the thing is that the tip is that if you are rendering make sure that your chrome and that is top right here chrome is set at 100 percent because if you set it any smaller than 100 percent you get these big black borders like an L-shaped um, border around the outside and you'll notice that the Google Earth watermark is in but it's in a black area Chrome can't read it if it's more or, or less rather than 100% I did do a test on 150% and it looked the same for whatever reason I cannot vouch if that is exactly the same or perhaps it was a bug that's been changed but that was tested on the 29th of December these tests were done on the 14th of December and of course here we are on oh my goodness sorry about that we're actually on the 13th of um, February not the 12th that was yesterday's slide so in part two we're going to put these things together and see if we can get our still frames out of Google Earth Studio and then put them into video editors